Hello, today we're going to take a look at a few things for the IBM PS2. First off, as you may have seen other YouTubers talk about, I'm going to talk about this sound card. This is the ReSound 2, or PL3, created by Textilec for the MCA, Microchannel Architecture, for the PS2. It's not a um, sound blaster, it's just an ad lib, so it just does music and not sound effects, but it's better than nothing, and it's also better than spending like $600 or $2,000 on a proper, like, vintage sound blaster for the PS2. It's basically the same thing as using like the OPL3 LPT, the parallel port one, except this is an internal one. Another thing I have is this card by a company called AST, which you may have heard of if you're a fan of the 8-bit guy. And what this is, this is a memory expansion. Right now the PS2 Model 50 only has one meg of RAM and this can add another eight. This card didn't actually come with RAM, so I had to get some. This is hopefully eight megs of RAM to go in that card and we'll see if the machine can work with nine megs of RAM. First off, let's go ahead and unbox this AST Advantage 2 card. This I bought on eBay. I'm not sure if it was used or not. The manual was still sealed in its plastic, but that doesn't really mean it was used or not, you know? I'm not sure. It doesn't mean it was unused. People don't always read the manual, so who knows? Inside, we have a nice big full-size microchannel architecture card. As you see, it's got one, two, three, four, eight RAM banks. These tank 30 pin SIMs, which I only had um, 72 pin SIMs lying around, not 30, so I had to buy some. Also, this port here is a SCSI port, but I don't know if I can boot from this card. I don't think this card has a SCSI BIOS on it or anything, so I still need the SCSI card that I already have inside the PS2 in order to boot off of the hard drive I have attached. The manual was actually just some pages that had holes in them but did not come with this binder. This binder I had to purchase on my own. Hope you can read that, but interestingly, according to the manual for the Advantage 2, you can only install 256k sticks or 1 meg sticks of RAM and they have to be paired. So you add RAM in bank of 512 or 2 megs. It's kind of interesting. The manual also lists um, manufacturers and even part numbers of RAM that is compatible. Um, like I said, I didn't have any 30 pin SIMs, so I went online and I found some which seemed to match the model number, except not 100%. I have Toshiba sticks here, that's THM91000AS-10, but the manual only has ones that say S-10, doesn't have the A there, but I don't see why these would be incompatible. They are 100 nanosecond sticks of RAM, which is what the board expects. So I'm gonna put these on and we'll see what happens. They should hopefully work. So in other YouTube channels, you may have seen this ReSound 2 OPL3 MCA card by Texelec. When I saw it, I immediately had to order one because I knew I wanted to try it out in this system. I don't know how many games I have of them like Planet X 3 and maybe a few others that will work with this, but it should be fun to, um, to try it out. As you notice, there is no bracket on this because unlike PCI brackets, MCA brackets are impossible to find on your own. So, a bracket that works with that card is the IBM token ring card, which I didn't have one, but this was like dirt cheap on eBay and this bracket, even though it's for a serial port, does line up with where the audio jack is. So the audio jack might just kind of sit in the middle of the serial port there, but at least we'll have a bracket and it'll mount correctly in the case. The only problem is this bracket is riveted on, so I'm gonna have to drill it out and hopefully have some screws and some nuts to attach it to the sound card. So I'm gonna go ahead and try that and we'll see what happens. So I managed to drill out the rivets on the token ring card take the bracket and put it on the sound card. Now, in case you're wondering, I didn't have the correct nuts or any, any nuts at all that would fit on here. So these are actually the screws that I took out of the serial port here or the token ring port here. And I had some nuts that match it. So, well, not pretty, 
it is at least attached to this card now and it should you know actually fit in the computer properly before we put anything in the computer we have to repair our other card our ram card with ram this is just 30 pin sim memory and interestingly when i ordered eight sticks of it i got four of this type and four of this other type i don't know if the camera wants to really focus on these sticks but hopefully the four green ones and the four yellow ones should work with each other they seem to be using the same memory chips on the actual modules i just think different companies made the modules but i suppose it doesn't matter so we take our board and we load our ram sticks into it we go one clipped on in i guess since i have to pair the modules for bank i will make sure that the two match pairs are or either each of the match pairs are using the same module man look at that isn't that pretty wonder how much all of this ram would have cost when this card was new actually i wonder how much this card would have cost on its own and then you know this is the max amount of ram this card can hold this is eight one meg sticks so this probably must have cost a fortune when it came out and i got it for well obviously cheaper than it cost then but this card was pretty pricey the ram was actually pretty cheap so now that this card and this card prepared and ready to go into the machine see the machine up here opened up and put them inside welcome back to the program our ibm ps2 model 50. Don't mind this foam padding. This was just padding to keep the hard drive from making too much noise since it doesn't really quite supposed to fit in here. And uh, well, now opening up this machine, I notice quite a bit of a problem. There are only three expansion slots and I have two cards to install and there are two cards in here. So I guess I'm gonna take out this ethernet card because I want to use it, but I'm not currently using it. So I'll take it out and I can always put this 3Com card back in if I want to use it. I'll probably just take the sound card out and put this in if I want to use it. I can't think of anything that would require both a sound card and an ethernet card on a 286. So this is fine. Interestingly, there is another MCA slot here where the original controller card went, but there's no back bracket. So none of my cards will actually fit there. So unfortunately that slot is wasted. In this first slot is our future domain SCSI controller, which I need to keep in here to actually boot the system because I'm pretty sure I can't boot off of the Advantage 2. which I'm gonna put in the next slot because I'm not gonna be taking this card out probably ever. The last slot will either be the sound card or the ethernet card because I may swap those out depending on what I'm doing. So let's get this guy installed. All right, I guess there's still a bank blinking plate there. Let's, uh, let's take the interesting looking blinking plate out. Drop in our advantage with our, all of our RAM on it. Beautiful. Tighten that in. Get a nice AST logo on the back there. Fits in perfectly. The RAM doesn't touch the net card next to it. And then our sound card with our bracket totally legitimately, legitimately attached to it. Hopefully this will fit with these giant hum screws that aren't really meant for it. It should, I think. Um, kind of a tight fit because these screws are really not supposed to be in here. But it does fit in there. It went in, even though it's probably not supposed to. And I know you can't see, but these bolts are probably squeezing tighter than they should. I'm gonna probably order some proper screws for here. Cause this is where you would only put screws. Like you could see on on this card, it's 
it's got screws here and well interestingly it's missing a nut on this side but it's got a nut on this side so i need to order some of these nuts and these screws so i can add a nut to here and properly attach this card this is real tight in here i don't think it's broken or anything but i don't think i really tightened this the way i should so but it's in there it's fine good to go i hope so now i need to get the reference disk and load up the adf files for these two cards okay we got our system booted up into a reference disk I didn't record it, but the memory test when the computer booted up still said one megabyte because obviously the eight megs hasn't been initialized yet. So let's see if that will work here. I copy the ADF files for both onto here. So let's see, let's see if this will work. This should be able to find the two ADF files on the floppy and load them up. Okay, that's a good sign. Let's let it restart and go back to reference disk and see what happens. Let's see if this goes any higher than one. Nope, still stops at one. I guess I need to set it to an eight or nine in the settings. So let's move back into the reference disk and see what we get. You can see our SCSI controller there. And we're booting off with the reference disk again. Alright, let's see what we got. I think it's set configuration is what we want. Okay. View configuration. Well, there we go. We have our text select resound OPL3 MCA there. I think you can use a official like IBM AdLib ADF file, but I used a customized text select one, which is obviously why it says text select there. And now we can see the AS2 advantage. Um, according to the manual, you, ha you have to use one wait state for the model 50. And for the memory configuration, we have to set it to Oh, that's the wrong button. <laughs> if I hit the right button, uh, well, that's the right button to move here, is it? Okay, so it turns out I'm an idiot. To change it, I need to go to change configuration compared to just view configuration. So change configuration. Now I can change this to something else. There we go. See? This means each bank has two megs, which is what I did. Total of eight megs here. So nine total. Let's go ahead and save that. Good. Let's go ahead and reboot. Take our floppy disk out. So we just boot into our hard drive. 107. I'm not sure what that means. Maybe we can't just do a soft reboot like that. Maybe we need to actually power it off and back on for a memory configuration change. Okay, so booting with the AST Advantage memory board was giving me 107 errors. System code 107 once I configured it to all the memory that it had. Pretty sure maybe there's something wrong with the, the RAM. Maybe it's not seated right. Maybe something else is wrong with the configuration. Maybe there was something else I had to change, not just add the memory there. I don't know. But anyway, taking that board out lets the system boot again, because it wouldn't boot with that 107 error. But luckily, we still have our sound card installed. And let's see if that works. If we load up Planet X3 and tell it to use AdLib, we should hear that the music is coming through the AdLib card and the sound effects are coming through the PC speaker. So even in a game, we have music coming through the ad lib card and then sound effects through the PC speaker. So hopefully this should sound the same as the OPL3 LPC since rather, you know, they're both OPL3 chips. Might even be like the same type of OPL3 chip on this card and on the external sound card. So could at least one of these cards work. So now I have to debug the AST advantage and see why I can't get more RAM in here. Well, sometimes things work and sometimes things don't. The things that work are the sound card, 
So now I have a music card installed inside of our PS2, which I'm just going to leave there. Maybe I'll swap it out if I want to use the Ethernet card for something. And by sometimes things don't work, I mean, I couldn't get the machine to boot with this. Well, I can get it to boot with this in it, but I can't get it to boot with this in it with the RAM slots populated. I think the RAM that I got is just not compatible with this. So when this tries to load the RAM, it's not working. The RAM I have has nine chips on it. I think eight chips are used and one is parity. And the model number on this RAM stick is slightly different than the one in the manual. The model number on this RAM stick has an extra A in it. And I don't know what that means, but maybe that's something that's incompatible. I bought this thinking it was nine, pin, uh, nine chip, 100 nanosecond RAM. So it should be the same, but apparently it's not working. I've tried different combinations of the two different types of RAM that I have. I think they're different, but I don't think they really are. I th the nine chips that are on each of them do have the same markings on them. So these should be basically the same RAM, but I guess if one doesn't work, then the other one doesn't work. And I tried different combinations and nothing happened. Unfortunately, while trying different combinations of, of that, I broke off one of the little plastic clips that holds the RAM on. I still have it, but I don't think I can glue it back on or anything. If I do find a working RAM for it, I guess I'll just use some tape or something to hold hold the RAM in. Actually, and I, might, I don't know if we need to, I think just the one clip on the other side should should be good. The manual even said, be, be real careful when taking the RAM in and out, but having to like bend the plastic clips to get the RAM out. Ironically, it actually broke putting the RAM stick in, not out, but oh well. It's not the end of the world. There are ways to hold the RAM in without that clip. It should be fine once I find the correct RAM. I'll post in the description the model number of the RAM that I have and the model number of the RAM that's in the manual in case anyone is curious. And I guess I'll have to keep hunting around for different RAM and hopefully get this memory board to work in our PS2. I mean, I don't really know what I need more than one meg of RAM for on the system, but just to have nine megs of RAM could be a load of fun. Maybe with nine megs of RAM, um, I don't know. I don't think I can run Windows 3 on it. I mean, we have Windows 2 on it and I don't think that really cares about more RAM, but I don't know. This was a fun thing to try out and if I can't get it working, I can't get it working. It's all good. Anyway, I guess that's it for this video. If you want to support me on Patreon, the link to that will be in the description as well. And thanks for watching.